Amongst countless VPN providers, few have faced the controversies rivaling those of CryptoStorm VPN. On the surface, this VPN, formerly known as CryptoCloud, has a loyal fan base, a long history of development, and some outstanding privacy measures. But behind the scenes, we're looking at the software first conceived by a convicted criminal tied to drug trafficking and sick animal-related perversions, with rumors linking CryptoStorm to a possible FBI honeypot operation, what is actually going on with it? Today, I'm investigating the convoluted history of one of the most controversial VPN providers. Before I get to discussing the VPN itself, let's take a closer look at its founder, a now-deceased man by the name of Douglas Brian Spink. Long before this man made national headlines due to his crimes against animals in the 1990s, Brian Spink was a successful businessman and entrepreneur. In the 2018 book covering his life, author Kareen Maloney cites that one of Brian's associates described him as the smartest mother he ever met. Despite losing his fortune due to a massive scam in 2001, seeing his future deal burn in the flames of 9-11, and even getting jailed in 2005 for smuggling hundreds of pounds of cocaine, he seemed to have come out on top. After all, in 2007, as soon as he served his time, Spink formed Banneke Private Computing Incorporated, dipping his toes into cybersecurity. Now, the archived page of the now permanently defunct company's website shows promise of providing privacy-enhanced computers and software, specifically a VPN service. These days, the advertised website shows off some cute puppies, which is quite ironic considering Spink's next meeting with law enforcement. <clears throat> but this will have to wait. For now, we're interested in jumping to 2008, to the early days of CryptoCloud, Spink's first serious VPN venture. Spink claimed that while in prison, he got an idea to create his own VPN from an article in the Wall Street Journal. And this is how CryptoCloud was born as one of the first commercial VPNs in the world. Little can be found about this provider today, except for a couple old VPN review pages from third-party websites and some page snippets from the web archive and we can tell that it wasn't the worst VPN back then, but no more than that. So CryptoCloud is important because this unassuming website will transform into a little less unassuming website in only five years, completely rebranding as CryptoStorm. But before that happens, Brian Spink has to be arrested again. All right, in 2010, he was sentenced to serve three years in prison following an investigation into his illicit interest in animals. Honestly, this is, this is not a case I'd call family friendly, so let's just say it involves some really, and I mean really horrible things done to animals. Anyway, back then, some crypto cloud users raised questions regarding the security of the service. After all, all the electronics that he owned were seized by law enforcement, including software and hardware connected to his VPN project. Even after his time in prison, Spink never got him back despite filing an official appeal. Okay, this brings us to 2013 when CryptoStorm VPN, formerly CryptoCloud, really started up, allegedly cutting ties with Douglas Bryan Spink, a figure too controversial to be a part of legitimate business. But even then, CryptoStorm continued to carry on a legacy of Spink's core values because privacy was a thing that shaped both the criminal's life and his virtual private network service. See, the founder of CryptoStorm was a very paranoid and secretive man. Hardly surprising, considering that to him all humans seemed faceless. Yeah, prosopagnosia, or face blindness, is an extremely rare condition, but it's real. So with a brain unable to process facial features, even his own, Spink was living in a world he couldn't trust. Naturally, his unhealthy attractions made him even more paranoid of other people, fostering extreme trust issues. Honestly, it makes you wonder if that's why he turned to animal love, if he just couldn't look into the face of a human without seeing confusion. Ironically, paranoia and trust issues work really well as a soil for growing a reliable privacy service. Everything about CryptoCloud and later CryptoStorm screams about dedication to being anonymous, private, and unseen. Back in 2013, the CryptoStorm website featured a page describing a privacy seppuku pledge. It's a promise to shut the company down if it's ever pressured by anyone to release any customer information. Furthermore, the company claims to have already done it before. Even if the link leading to the proof of that seems to have been lost to time, 
Was that before referring to 2010 when Spink himself was arrested and his assets were seized? Did CryptoCloud self-destruct so it could hide the crimes of its creator? There's no clear answer, but there are more curious things hidden on the archived pages of the 2013 CryptoStorm website. For instance, it didn't list any people involved in the project with the team page explaining that their stance on absolute privacy makes them a potential target for harassment, persecution, or threats of violence. It's funny how this old archived page also features a footnote explaining what a honeypot is when CryptoStorm itself is suspected to be one. So a honeypot is a trap, one made to be lucrative to a specific people, the kind of people the trap's creator wants to catch. In CryptoStorm's case, some people suspected that the entire reason why Spink spent only a few years in prison for each of his crimes is because he struck a deal with the FBI, giving access to CryptoStorm and his other projects in exchange for his freedom. So what kind of project are we looking at? Of course, we can no longer take a look at CryptoCloud VPN, the website is long gone, and even the third-party link for possibly the last copy of the installation file is now offline. So the same can't be said about CryptoStorm, though. Even 11 years later, the name got brought up on Reddit, even if only briefly, with some people mentioning it as a trustworthy provider. Right now, CryptoStorm is not dead, it's just not public. You won't see shiny adverts or YouTubers shilling for it. Unsurprisingly, really, once you realize that CryptoStorm is a service for the truly paranoid, it says so on the homepage of the service. In hindsight, it doesn't look too awe-inspiring, does it? Whether today or 11 years ago, CryptoStorm's website is kind of off-putting. Honestly, I find it bizarre that a business website that's usually made to advertise would look this way. Compared to my favorite providers, be it Surfshark or NordVPN, CryptoStorm looks inconsistent, misguided, and dare I say, creepy in comparison. The weird shift in background style as you scroll down, the tiny text, the tech jargon, the old style icons, the ugly drop down menus. I just can't shake off the feeling that something is wrong here. So let's take a closer look. Considering that CryptoStorm originates from one person's paranoia, how is this provider doing in terms of privacy measures? According to the website, CryptoStorm's privacy can rival most top level providers. First of all, it's open sourced with all server configurations being public, as well as an extensive no logs policy that even goes into technical details. Secondly, CryptoStorm uses token based network access. This is similar to Molvad. Both providers don't ever require user email or login details, only a special code a user gets on purchase. These access tokens are even hashed before connecting, so not even server seizure can de-anonymize the user. Thirdly, CryptoStorm straight up says, if you don't trust it, use multi-hop or Tor to add extra protection. I like this straightforwardness. It does seem that CryptoStorm is genuinely concerned for the privacy of their users. I bet they're even writing about it in their blog. We can see that the blog is rather young. It started in 2018, long after Douglas Spink left CryptoStorm. And yet, why would they use pictures of animals knowing the kind of man their founder was. This is unsettling. But let's keep that in mind for now and move on, okay? We still have security to go through, and this is where most users would be lost. CryptoStorm is not playing around. They list all the security measures they're using paired with hyperlinks leading to the explanations. Of course, at the end of the day, it all boils down to using either the standard OpenVPN protocol or the modern option like WireGuard. Most modern providers give such a choice, NordVPN, ExpressVPN, Surfshark, CyberGhost, and so on and so forth. And yet, there's more. Customized systems over here include the mention of completely disposable servers, for one. The benefits listed below include a proprietary deep DNS infrastructure, access to Onion websites and other stuff I already saw on most other VPN providers. The subscript for the security section makes a joke about them seeming a bit too paranoid, but that doesn't seem like a joke to me. I've seen a lot of VPN providers through the years, but none of them combined that many different measures when half of those could have done the trick. CryptoStorm's terms of service do mention that pushing past the limits and providing a previously unattainable level of privacy, but speaking from a business perspective, who would buy a VPN like that? Especially if we take a look at the pricing and immediately find out that CryptoStorm is expensive. More expensive than industry-recognized providers which passed independent audits and constantly developed through the years. You know which ones I'm talking about. Besides, most VPNs these days look much more approachable than CryptoStorm, which still resembles a Windows XP app. 
I mean, I almost feel the urge to contact this unknown team of individuals and ask what they're thinking. Let's take a look at contacts. No, not GitHub, Twitter. I mean, X is too inconsistent, only posting every few months. No, I still don't get it. Even with Spank long dead, why would they post animal related pictures? Even memes, even if they are funny, especially horses, which Spink loved a little too much. Why would a legitimate business invite doubt and suspicion by posting something like this? But enough about that. What are the other contacts? Keybase? What is that? An open source messenger that allows you to manage your identity, create security chats, and share files privately. There's no mistaking it, CryptoStorm staff is all about being paranoid. These things are unsettling. Knowing that from its early days, Douglas Spink used CryptoCloud to share explicit criminal files with like-minded individuals, the paranoid nature of CryptoStorm arouses too much suspicion. The service's live chat is also strangely creepy. I've joined it on multiple occasions. Don't judge, it was research. I joined during different times of the day, and yet there are always the same 44 members sitting silently in the chat room. One of them, a staff member by the name of Fermi, the same one who's mentioned on the contacts page. Furthermore, the chat room is completely silent. Yeah, I've left it running for hours. Not a single message popped up. This is likely not the only channel. When logging into the chat, you can try looking for a channel you need if you have its name. I don't have a lot of proof to connect CryptoStorm to anything shady. Not at all. Nor do I really suspect it of being a worst VPN or a scam VPN, or even a secret hangout spot for criminals. This is, I mean, this is an earnest service. Maybe not very good at doing business, but passionate about privacy. You can see as much from their privacy policy and multiple parts of the FAQ section where the intent just spills out of the text. That's why I'm so perplexed. Why is CryptoStorm giving out such bad vibes? Is that because I've spent hours reading into the criminal undertakings of their founder? Or because a lot of things on this website appear unnecessarily suspicious? Could it be that CryptoStorm really is a honeypot? Deliberately made to look suspicious and overly dedicated to privacy to appeal to the kinds of people that will find themselves at home with such vibes? To tell you the truth, I don't think that's the case. It just looks to me that CryptoStorm is a passion project, born from paranoia of one deranged individual and grown into a collective result of many people's paranoia. It seems like exactly the kind of thing conspiracy theorists would enjoy having. So while there are dozens of more approachable user-friendly VPNs with features that make sense in a commercial product aimed at all kinds of users, CryptoStorm is not terrible. It just seems to be overly tied to the legacy of a man many would rather have forgotten. 